Hi again everybody, this is Lonnie Bowling and this is going to be uh, part 3, I believe, of my series of getting started with the uh, Pi System SDKs and uh, we're talking about uh, how to use AF SDK. So um, hopefully you've gone through the first couple of parts and uh, things are rolling along for you and you're having some uh, luck connecting your Pi System. So now that we've done that, we really need to get down to business and start doing something uh, for real. So what I want to do uh, in this uh, series is in this this part three is to talk about uh, Pi points and what Pi points are, how we can um, find Pi points in our system, and then finally how can we read some values. I know this is kind of like the number one thing that, uh, that people are going to want to do, right? This is, you know, uh, fine, I've got all this data in my Pi system, I need to access it. So uh, how can we access current values and how can we find uh, what uh, Pi points are in our Pi server? So let's uh, Let's go ahead and switch over to the example that I had um, going for us in the last part. And if you remember, we, um, we just went through and we found our known servers list. Uh, we printed that out and then we, um, and then we connected to our default server. I'll just run this real quickly so you can see what the output looks like. We have our server list and then we know that our default server is skypycloudapp.net. Okay, so... Uh, how are we going to get Pi points, and, and what the heck are Pi points? Well, I think the best way to do it is to start up uh, system management tools, the Pi, Pi SMT. Um, I'm sure as a Pi administrator, you've used this tool in the past. Um, if you haven't used it, uh, you know, get familiar with it. This is really uh, understanding uh, what happens in the Pi system and being able to navigate in, in this uh, tool is, uh, is critical. Um, for anybody that's working in the Pi system, especially if you're doing programming, you're going to be uh, coming back to this. So I'm going to uh, connect to our SkyPy and I'm going to go to our current values list. And what I want to do is I'm just going to do a search and I'll search for um, CDT, put an asterisk here, and we can see that I have a couple of values that uh, match that wildcard search. This should all be um, pretty basic stuff that, that um, you, you probably already know about. So you can see that we've got these, uh, these tags here um, called tag names, and we can see that we have some values. These, are our, these values that we're seeing here are the current values, and in the Pi system they call those snapshot values. So a snapshot value is just saying, hey, this is the last value that's, that's been delivered uh, into the Pi system for a particular tag. Now, um, a tag is also referred to as a point, and um, a Pi point is... is the same thing, tags and pi points are interchangeable. Okay, When we're talking about, uh, on the programming SDK side, we're going to be talking about pi points. Um, so here you can see we have a point builder, and we could do the same thing. We could search, and we could find uh, the CDT tags, and we could bring, uh, uh, we could, uh, bring those in, and we could look at uh, each individual tag, and we could edit it from here. So the nice thing is, is that... Um, is that all this stuff that we're doing in uh, the SMT, we can do this uh, also in S SDK. So pretty much anything that you see here and you're able to do here, you could do the same thing using the SDK. So let's go ahead and explore that. I want to go back and I kind of want to do some of the functionality that we saw here where we had a search and we could find uh, some Pi points and then we um, are displaying uh, some of their current values. All right? All right, so let's take a look at uh, the documentation. Because remember, um, I can show you how to do these, these things uh, one at a time, and you can come and watch the video, and you can see, okay, great, I understand a pie point now. But uh, going back to the documentation is really going to be important because this is going to allow you to kind of think on your own. And so I, wanna, I really want to dive into um, how the documentation is put together and, and how that works. So here you can see we have our Pi server. We've kind of gone through this. And down here you can see we have this point, Pi point classes. We have a Pi point class. And under that we have uh, this Pi point dot find. And we, can, uh, uh, we have this Pi point list and this Pi point. So I think this Pi point dot find uh, with this point list, um, I think this is where we, we want to head. We want to head out in this direction here. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at at um, the Pi Point. Um, that's part of Pi Point. So let's go to the Pi Point here, and we have this find method. Okay. So what's this find method about? And it looks like it's going to give us a, a Pi Point list, um, which is something that that we want to do. So let's uh, remember I told you to go to members, and you can kind of come through and you can kind of look at what's available. Uh, um, with a particular uh, class and so here we're going to be um, interested in um, something that is going to be a uh, pie point and we want to do um, we want to we want to do a find we want to look for a find here somewhere so um, here we have five uh, we have this this is under uh, methods you can see we have a find pie point with the string, and this returns the pi point identified by the path. Um, and then we have a uh, we have a find pi point, and we can pass in a pi server, and we can pass in an int 32, and this will find a pi point by ID. And then we have this pass in a pi server and a string, and we can find the pi point by name. This is the one that most uh, is most similar, I think, to what we see in the SMT in that search box. So let's. Let's click on this guy and see what it says. Okay, find a Pi point on the current Pi server using the specified point name. Uh, and here we can see that uh, we need to pass in a server, we need to pass in a point name, and it's going to re return uh, this Pi point. And that's that's really what what we want to do. And uh, you know, there's not a whole lot more to talk about here other than we're going to get back this Pi point, which is something that we want to be interested in. So let's go ahead and just see if we can pull a Pi point in and um, and see what what happens. Okay, so we want to uh, come over to our code here and we know we need to pass in a server. Well, we have our server up here. So let's let's do that. And I'm going to use a var... Uh, let me stop. I'm going to use the var... Uh, let's go ahead and get a pi, uh, a pi point. Okay, so I'm going to use the var keyword and we'll do... this is going to be called our point and we'll equal to, we want to do, uh, this is going to be part of the pi point class, right? Right here, and we want to do find pi point, and IntelliSense is really helping us out. It's matching what we what we saw with our documentation. And then, uh, and now it's saying there's three different, uh, three different overloads that we have here. Um, the string is a path, and it's giving us pretty much kind of what, what it says in the documentation. If we need the server and the point name, we could just throw in a path, which is one option. We could do a pi server with a point ID. That's our other option. And then we have this pi server with a point name, which is the option I want to take. Uh, so we have our pi server up here that we pulled in, our default pi server. So let's go ahead and, uh, and um, do a pi point or a pi server. And then our point name is we wanted to do uh, CDT150. Uh, Okay. And um, this is going to find a single pi, pi point for us. And if we come back with a point, then we should be able to display some data here. And let's go ahead and do, uh, let's do a right line and let's uh, say point um, and uh, let's say uh, point. Uh, let's just do uh, zero here and we want to display something and I'm willing to bet without even looking at the documentation that there's going to be some some stuff with this pi point that we could probably use like the name or something like that so let's see what IntelliSense does sometimes it's fun just to try and 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 use IntelliSense so you don't even have to go back to the documentation it's kind of built in but here you can see we have a name so uh, we could we could do that and that's that's really going to tell us if we found, uh, this should be CDT158 if we're successful. So uh, let's try that and uh, let's say, I want to come into here and uh, say that point was found. Okay, And if we didn't find this point, then this probably would not have a value. And so um, we'll talk about uh, nulls and things like that as we get in. But let's just see if, um, let's see if this works. I'm going to F5 and uh, we should connect to that Pi server. And now we're going to look for, um, we're, we're, we're connected to here, and we want to look for CDT158. You can see the pi point is null, 
to do an F10. And if we found the point, then we should see it. And there we have, uh, we have the point ID is 3. We can see that the name is CDT158 and that um, we have information now. You can see this name is here. Um, so let's go ahead and F5. And of course it says point CDT158 was found. So pretty simple. Um, we found a pi point. The next, the next item is, uh, you know, what are we going to do with this point and what are the various things that we can do with their point. So once again, let's go back to the documentation and find out uh, what, what is uh, a pi point and what are all the things that we can do with it. Let's go to pi point members. And, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that can be done with, uh, with, um, with a um, point. And one of the things that, that I wanted to do just to start off is to get the snapshot value here. So we have, a, uh, we have this uh, snapshot and we can, um, it gets the uh, value of the point and we can look at that, how does that work? And what it says is that uh, we, um, we take a, um, we're gonna take our point, we're gonna do get snapshot and it's going to return this AF value. Okay, so here's an AF value, and we can see the AF value has a value, a timestamp, and a status, and some other stuff. And we can click on that, or we can look at our members here, and we can see that uh, uh, down here, uh, I think under properties is where we probably want to look at, we can see the value, actual value of it, the status of it, is it a good point, um, a lot of stuff that's, um, that's, that's contained in this AF value um, uh, class. So let's go ahead and uh, come over here and let's do another bar. And this should be an AF value, so let's call this value. And this is going to equal our pi point. And we want to uh, get the snapshot, right? And that should return a value. And then we can say, we can take, uh, we can maybe just move this down here. And we can add, uh, let's, uh, Let's add in, let's go ahead and say point, um, and then let's say value, um, we want to do, uh, yeah, uh, point, and let's say value, and what I want to do is, uh, let's, let's, let's look at the value and also at the timestamp, okay, so that would be these two guys, and then we could just come over to our point, and um, we should have this value if we ret retrieve the data, okay, and this should be um, value is a property that we're looking at. Now that's a type object, so I need to convert that to like a string just to see what's in there. I don't know if it's going to be a number, or bad value, or whatever, but we'll just convert to a string and display it. And then the other thing that I want to look at is our um, timestamp, and also let's do that to, uh, um, let's just go ahead and, and get that to a string. And so what we should see here is the value in the timestamp when we um, when we're all done. So make sure that bit builds and uh, let's uh, go ahead and run this, and we'll just step into it and see what happens. Okay, so here's our pi point. Hopefully we'll we'll retrieve that, which we did. CD two one fifty eight. Now we should get the snapshot value, and here I can hover over the value, and you can see that we have uh, data. We have it seventy nine point five. And it gives, it's giving us a, a timestamp, and it says that it is good, uh, it's true, which means we have a good value. So we could use that information uh, later on. So let's go ahead and run that, and you can see now we di uh, displayed our current value along, or our current pi point that we're looking for along with uh, the value. And an SMT, if I did a refresh, we should see um, something pretty close to that if we didn't bring in a, um, a new value. Let's see if uh, we can get this to connect back to our server. Yeah, apparently I'm having problems connecting to that. Let's see if we can connect. Uh, let's do that again. Let's, let's see if I'm going to pull in that value. And let's see. Uh, 82.79 at a... Uh, at a Let's pull up our, uh, see what our application looks like uh, here. Let's do this. Here we go. Um, this was 72. So let's see if we refresh this. 
Um, looks like we have an 85. Let's see if I can get the. Um, see if I can uh, stop this, run it again, and uh, we'll pull that up and that. Whoops. F5 this, <laughs> and uh, I want to get these two comparisons on top of each other. So just to see if they if they match up. And there we can see uh, we've got the same time and value that we have from both. So uh, just to prove that we're really really seeing those values. Okay, that is uh, that is a wrap for this. Hopefully, uh, you know that's kind of uh, step one is how to get a single point. Now I think the next one we want to do is we want to get a bunch of points and we want to see how how can we search for points and get a bunch of values maybe at the same time. So uh, thanks for watching and hopefully this is a help and I will catch you later. Uh, I'm Lonnie Bowling and uh, stay tuned. Thanks. Bye-bye.